My name is Robert Simmons and I'm currently a navigator working for Buncombe County. And I'm wanting to talk a little bit about my daddy taught me that program run by Keenan Lake. But more importantly, where Keenan came from with this because originally he wrote, he wrote a book entitled My Daddy Taught Me That, which was based on his relationship with his father, Benny Lake. I'm Al Whitesides and I'm a 1962 graduate of Stevens Lee High School in Asheville. And one of my good friends who was in the class of 62 with me was Benny Lee Lake, who was Keenan Lake's father. And Benny and I were good friends. When I first met him, I'd come, I'd gone eight years to Catholic school. So I didn't know a lot of people in public school at that time. I'm Ralph Roberts, and uh, I'm a native of the Asheville area, but I've lived and worked many places. I met Keenan Lake's father, Benny Lake, uh, when he, Benny and uh, Johnny Bailey was doing the uh, great sports heroes of Stephen Lee, a book about uh, the great players who played for the only black high school in Western North Carolina. And uh, Benny was a great guy, and through Benny I met his son Keenan. Sheena McDaniels and I'm a fan of My Daddy Taught Me That. I am Kenan's supervisor and friend for many years. Um, My Daddy Taught Me That is one of the best programs in Asheville, North Carolina. It's such a program that supports the youth here in Asheville. Um, the program reminds me of um, a mentoring session for boys with Kenan. My name is Kristen Wilson and I met Kenan two years ago. We worked together we, um, we met through Child Protective Services and immediately Keenan and I connected because I realized that he was doing the work for the same reason I do the work. Uh, after college, I was in the Navy. He was running around with the Globetrotters doing, you know, playing professional uh, basketball. And we got together maybe 15 years later when I was working here in Asheville for the bank. And he came back home working with the Juvenile Evaluation Center with disadvantaged kids. Those are the makings of you. It is true. Down at the park, the, the murals wanted everybody, to, first of all, to see. You know, that's my father right there with the striped shirt on with the dog. That's a, a, a picture that they did. We actually gave him the picture, but um, a picture that they did to honor him and his sister. That's actually, just my aunt Darlene in the picture as well. But um, you know, this is actually one of the historic areas in Nashville, you know, Eagle Market Street, where everything used to take place. And actually, right down here by the YMI Culture Center, which is actually the oldest African American building in the country. Um, we're going to go down a mural here sooner or later, and uh, you'll see another picture of Pops. Uh, what he actually had on his Harlem Globetrotter outfit and everything like that. So, want to just let everybody know that this is where the vision started from. You know, um, my father, who did so much for this community, you know, played with the Globetrotters, but what he's, his, what he's known for is the outstanding work that he did for the Juvenile Evaluation Center, working with youth and young adults, and then also starting his own organization, Upfront Sports Management. And if we even want to go further back, you know, what he did with youth and kids, you know, from the Logan Lake and Bailey uh, basketball camps and stuff like that so you know just just this is where the vision came from it came from him it came from what he instilled in me and that's why we have my daddy talk me that We made our way to the destination And found the store we were looking for With your cigarettes Do you think you'll ever
Marcus Davis. I steadily walk a heights. I've been in my daddy talking that for a year. And it helps a lot of kids change and go a good path and not a bad path. You're a hypocrite. Your face is blue, your lungs have stopped And I wanted to know What you really thought About all of that Doing a lot of work on his own in the summer with camps and helping you know underprivileged boys and how I got involved is I moved up with the bag I could give him more money each year because I had uh, and he would come and I would help him introduce him to other people and help him with you know money he truly was a man who left a large footprint because Benny had the kind of compassion that would lead you to see that he always was saying, how can I help you? That was his claim to fame. How can I help you? He worked for DSS for a number of years. He worked for Juvenile uh, Detention Center. But his demeanor and his behavior and his passion was making sure that the people around him was all right, especially his family. And Keenan has taken, uh, I guess, a page out of his book because now he's trying to pass on to others what was given so freely to him by his dad. And that was the importance of having that man in your life. Immediately, Keenan started telling me about um, My Daddy Taught Me That program and understood that he, um, he created this program after doing the work in Child Protective Services and going into families' homes and finding out how many children do not have uh, father figures, whether they're just not in the home or the father figure is ab absent emotionally or in a number of ways that there's a, a significant absence there. Keenan, this is Keenan's path. Um, Keenan did have an amazing father who did teach him about how to be a man and how to contribute to his community and how to show up in his community, how to have healthy relationships with children, with adults, with our elders, and the importance of that. Uh, uh, Benny passed away. Uh, Benny was on the uh, board of directors of URTV in Asheville, the public access station. Uh, also, and when he died, uh, we brought in Keenan, and Keenan did a really good job. And I began to uh, respect Keenan very much and realized that he had a passion for helping young people. And uh, he wrote a book, which I published, I have a publishing company, called uh, uh, about uh, uh, what uh, his dad had taught him. And uh, then he turned it into a program here uh, in, in the Asheville area to help the young people. and. Uh, I consider it very worthwhile, and I'm glad to to help out as serving on, serving on the board of directors and uh, uh, watching Keenan grow in the program. Keenan is uh, uh, helping a lot of kids to grow, but in doing it, he's helping himself as much as them. It, it's a great synthesis, and uh, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Pops, man, this is his tomb, and um, tombstone that me and my mother got him. But uh, basically, it shows you know, Pops passed away in 2010, um, February 12th. That's uh, pretty much a day after my birthday. I like to, you know, it was probably on my birthday, is when I late that night. But anyway, um, this is a part of the vision, part of the dream. And you know, two years after he passed, is when my, my first book was published. My daddy taught me that, that's when that was published. 
And then um, uh, literally a month after the book came out, uh, we actually started uh, the My Daddy Taught Me That program. July 1st, 2012 was when we actually started the program. And so, um, you know, a lot of times I, I contribute or attribute his, uh, his death to the birth of uh, My Daddy Taught Me That along with my social work background. program. Um, I met Keenan about a year ago and um, he was recommended to me for someone who could help mentor um, the young men that I serve at the high school. Um, he is the real deal. He spends so much of his extra time um, pouring into these young men. This is the only program like this in Asheville and um, these kids have really come so far. Um, and Keenan just gives so much of his life to um, our youth and to these young men, really bettering them and um, making them strong leaders in the community. Uh, how y'all doing? I'm uh, Chris Caldwell. I've been in the group for at least three and a half years. Uh, the group to me means, uh, it's like, a, really I'm older than everybody, so it's like they with my little brothers or something like that. And uh, I mean, he teaches us how to be a man. Uh, he takes us out, he does amazing stuff with us. He's really helped me mature a lot uh, through everything. I mean, I had a few, you know, heartbreaks and just, with my mom passing all that, he was there and stuff like that, and just he's shaped me to be a better man and made me want to do better things. I'm D'Angelo. I've been in MDTMT for a year and a half or so. We do a lot of things with jobs and learning, just just learning all types of things about life, making me a more mature man in life. That's pretty much it, though. Well, my name Tate. I've been here for a year and a half now. We go on fun trips, basketball games, football games, lake. He is a nice person, he do good things for us, he get us jobs, he give us money, he take us on trips, all that good stuff. My name is Cody and I've been in my daddy taught me that for about two years. Uh, we go on fun field trips, we go play, we go to watch football games, basketball games, and Keenan is just very inspiring and he's a very smart person. My name is Naj. I program fun. We do good stuff. We learn. We go on fun trips, and I advise y'all to come and support us. My name is Tyler Goforth. I go to my daddy taught me that. I've been here since it started. We're in Pisgahview Apartments. We um, the program's really fun. He's shown me things I wouldn't know. Taught me things. Teaches us how to be a man. What to do. And he's just a fun guy. Thank you.
And everything you do, just try to be the great. My daddy told me that life is still a blessing. Even when you're stressing, take a step back and try to learn the lesson. My daddy told me that everything that glitters ain't gold. Ain't gold. But they can never dim the light that's in your soul. My daddy told me that. Yo, in memory of Benny Lake, man, a great man. Hi, everybody. My name Shout is Demetrius Grant. Uh, my son, Saheed Grant and Elijah Grant, both were in Keenan's Lake uh, program. My daddy taught me that. And I just want everybody to know that that program is a really good program. It's for the youth. It helps the youth. And a lot of more people need to get involved. And thank you very much. Hey, what's going on? This is Big Joe Green. Represent my daddy taught me that program, man. I just want to give a shout out to my brother, Keenan Lake, man. You know, your vision coming to play, man. I'm proud of and happy for you, man. Glad I can be your partner in crime, man. Well, not crime. Just for your partner, man. And glad that the program helping young men developing to different to, to real men so definitely want to give you a shout out man shout out to the whole film crew and everything man appreciate everything husband he was born in 1943 December the 1st and we we met uh, up in New York and when I met him in New York he was working for Wiltwick School for Boys and the Wiltwick School for Boys uh, was a very prestigious school for a young black men or I think um, may have been a school of color I'm not really sure but uh, it was written about in many books and things like that. But Benny, he liked working with children. Uh, he played with the Harlem Globetrotters. I met him after that. And he was a very good man. I can't tell you enough about him. Um, he was my husband after uh, several years after we met. But uh, we were together for 38 years. And uh, we were married that long, and we moved to Asheville. And I was very surprised about um, how big Asheville was compared to coming from New York. And uh, but you know, he explained to me, you know, how much better it would be to be in the South at that time than to be in the North. They had just had a meat shortage <laughs> up in New York uh, in that area, so. Uh, we were glad to move on. But Benny, he uh, liked working with children. He always liked working with children. Whether it was through a job, which he worked for the boys club when he got here, or if it was just children on the street or at his grandmother's house, because children were always around and they would always ask him, um, you know, for help. And he would always give his help, for his, give his free time. Benny was uh, uh, the kind of man that uh, he always wanted to teach something to somebody so when they would walk away from him that they would be a better person or, or they would know something that they didn't know before to better themselves in their lives, especially with children. Um, it kind of reminds me of ACC coach, uh, what's his name, Mike Krzyzewski. Keenan is the youth's number one coach. He challenges them every day. Um, he teaches them how to be men. He mentors them. Um, he has such a respect for the process for guys. Um, he encourages them to um, be educated and also be able to form responsible and dedicated relationships with their peers. And at this point in time, um, if I had the kind of relationship that Keenan had with his dad, I think life may have been different in the experiences that I've had in terms of not making some of the same mistakes over and over. Because the one thing I can tell you about his dad, he was a man of his word, he was a man of conviction, and he was a man who, if he told you he was gonna do something, his word was his bond. And this is the characteristic trait that Keenan has taken on from him that is so valuable because it was passed down from one generation to the next. And in a lot of cases, that generational linkage, it's been broken. 
So he decided to keep doing his job and then in his free time to create this program out of his own pocket. And um, he spent the past few years doing that and it is now a, a very successful program. And not because of the support from people with power, but specifically because Keenan has the relationships in the community. He um, connects with these children and these children connect with him and he provides them with the opportunity to see what's possible. He worked for the Boys Club and then he started working for the state. Uh, he started working with uh, criminal youth and he did that for 30 years. He did that for 30 years and uh, that was a very good job for him. It was very rewarding. And to this day, I can go down here to the grocery store and one of the kids that he had in this program will come up to me and they say, Miss Lake, uh, your husband saved my life. If it wasn't for him helping me through the program, you know, with the state, I don't know where I would be. Um, he's like a father figure, and a lot of youth that are in his programs don't have a relationship with their dad. And Kena is there in the morning time, in the evening, in the middle of the night. He supports the youth as well as the families that we serve in his community. I mean, he's just a dedicated guy. He's educated. He checks on the kids' um, grades. He talks to them about um, social determinants in this community, how you need to give back to the community that you serve. And um, he's just a, a great guy. The children get to see how he interacts with other people in the community. Um, and he does a program called Life Changing Events where he takes the children out so that they're experiencing something they would not experience in, um, in their life normally. Uh, he's taken the children to Atlanta to um, go visit the church where Martin Luther King Jr. was preaching. He um, takes them to football games, but he does this in a way where they realize that this is a very real possibility for them. Um, one thing that makes me very sad about Asheville is, for one, Asheville is one of the very few places in the country where we are decreasing in population, uh, African American population. From my understanding, this is because for the African American population that is able to persevere through all the systemic racism, the structural racism that is, has been in place here, for those who are able to break through the glass ceiling, go to school, that basically parents are saying don't come back. Um, and children, African American children don't want to come back to Asheville because there's not the opportunities, they're not seeing the opportunities of leadership here. Keenan is devoted to changing that. Well, my name's DeAndre. I'm here to talk about my daddy taught me that. It's an awesome program for all men. As you can see, he brought us to D.C. We take awesome trips. We have a lot of fun. We learn a lot of different stuff. He teaches us a lot of stuff. It's just a really good program for young men that want to develop and become higher in the communities and stuff. First of all, I want to thank all the supporters, all of the volunteers for the My Daddy Taught Me That program and give you a little example of what the My Daddy Taught Me That program entails, what it is, what we do. For example, right now we're in Washington, D.C. Um, at the Million Man March. We brought 25 kids, 25 of our students out to enjoy the event. But um, this, this program transpired from the book that I wrote, My Daddy Taught Me That, which was, uh, again, a vision from the father that I had, the legacy that he left. Um, the book is designed to educate, inform, and inspire men to be better for our children, better for our families, and also ultimately just be the leaders that we're born to be to try to set that stage to make our families and our children's lives better. With that being said, in 2012, um, July 1st, uh, the My Daddy Taught Me That Men's Development Program was born. There's a, this is a four-tier program. The program, uh, the first tier of the program 
is what we call the men discussion groups. Every Monday, every Wednesday, we meet from about 6 uh, p.m. to 8 p.m. and we have these men discussion groups. We talk about everything from the privatization of prisons to third grade reading test scores to how to tie a tie. We talk about what's happening in right here locally in Asheville, North Carolina. We talk about what's happening in the state, what's happening across our nation, what's happening across the world, you know, Boko Haram, politics, you name it. We have, men, we have uh, guest speakers come to speak to our youth and kids from the mayor of Asheville to uh, best, uh, New York best-selling author Bill Fortune to, you, to teachers, to you, you name it. We've had you know, the chief of police, firemen, everybody come talk to our, our youth about what's happening in life, but ultimately to show the positivity that uh, positive males can bring in our community. Um, the program, the men discussion groups, it does two things. It allows our youth to not only get information and have uh, that mentoring aspect of the program, but it allows their voices to be heard as well. The next part of the component is what we call life-changing events, being able to get our youth and our children out of their environment. Carolina Panther football games, Charlotte Hornet basketball games, the Battle of the Band Atlantis, and again, DC. Being able to expose these kids to different things, uh, give them an opportunity to have that, what I like to say, if you can see it, you can do it, you can achieve it. Um, the next part of the program is what we call, um, is our education component of the program and being able to monitor and follow each and every one of our youth uh, with, with their education in the school. So reaching out to either teachers and or guidance counselors um, and making sure that if they need tutors, if they need help in school, we can provide that as well. Last but not least, the job training component of the program. Uh, basically, we partner with um, Bojangles and Ingles to allow these young men to go through the whole application process, the interviewing process, and ultimately to be able to get a job at those two places. But more recently, we started um, a position in our program, a job training uh, component of, in our own program, where this summer we had six youth uh, go through this program and partner with a carpenter, an electrician, a plumber, and a painter for uh, six weeks, uh, 10 hours a week, to get those skills and stuff as well. We have done so many positive things from partnering with uh, Echo Mountain Studio to do a 15 week uh, 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 curriculum that they created for the program where every young man in the program got to learn about the, pretty much every aspect of music. From setting the stage up to breaking it down to making beats to learning the legal aspect, you name it, they got a chance to do it. From teaching Making Proud Choices, which is an evidence-based uh, STD, STI prevention program, um, we just partnered with Our Voices. Our Voices came and talked to our youth and our kids about sexual abuse and rape and Helpmate. They did the exact same thing. So being able to expose our youth to not only programming, but not only being able to get them out of their environment, but being able to give them opportunities is what we're about. We are so grateful that the supporters have helped us and that we have been able to do so much. Last but not least, I'd like to talk about two of our young men in the program, uh, Chris Codwell and DeAndre Smith. Those two have been in the program since the doors opened for three and a half years, and I'm so proud of those two because those are the first two seniors that we have who will be graduating this May. Again, we are so grateful to have all of our supporters. We are so grateful to have everybody in Asheville, all of our community uh, folks, be a part of the My Daddy Taught Me That program and movement. And we thank you for watching this DVD, this documentary, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Hey, young world, world. I'm doing this one for all my ghetto boys and girls. Yo, just put your mind to it. My daddy taught me that. It ain't all about the gold chains and Cadillacs, cause you better than that. And that's a matter of fact. So just make your planning success and stay on the track. You come from kings and queens, don't let them tell you different. And ain't nothing cool about going to prison The point is to make it out the hood and reach back But to ruin all possibility is the trap So don't fall, just stand tall Even if you gotta stand alone, you be better off, be better off. I ain't gonna tell you chase college, I'ma tell you chase knowledge yeah. Never be a follower, see you your own pilot so build your foundation solid and be careful when you're reaching for your wallet See, just some advice when it comes to life You gotta keep pushing forward and don't think twice What if Barack had to stop and Malcolm never made a lot Just take my word, it's more than one way off the block See, you could be a doctor, a lawyer, or even a cop Man, everyone with a badge ain't all bad, see We gotta be the change we wanna see 
And we can't leave it up to them, it's up to you and me Cause y'all my brothers and sisters, I love you, I'm with you So keep your eyes on the prize and focus on the bigger picture, the bigger picture. You'd be surprised at what you see You could be anything you wanna be My daddy taught me that Life ain't all about Jews and cars Keep your head up, use the star My daddy taught me that Life is what you make it, what you make it. And everything you do, just try to be the greatest My daddy taught me that Life is still a blessing even when you're stressing, take a step back and try to learn a lesson. My daddy taught me that everything that glitters ain't gold, but they can never dim the light that's in your soul. My daddy taught me that give a man a fish, then he eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, then his family gonna be straight. Gonna be straight. Forget light skin, forget dark skin. Just let the skin you in hurt from a wise man. It's not always the company you keep, but sometimes it's the company you seek. So be great, be early, be full late, and thank God before you even start to pray. Amen. And when you wake up every day, stand on your two and make a wish. Make sure we got this in the film. You know, this is uh, my parents' house right now. But this is Pop's original Harlem Globetrotter jersey. Something that I was really proud of. But I also want to show you something that he was very proud of. This is his Harlem Astronaut jersey. He actually played with the Harlem Astronauts a little bit longer than he played with the Globetrotters. And he was very proud of this because he was actually the man on this team. When he was in the Globetrotters, he played with Curly Neal and all those guys, Metal Lock Lemon. But on the Astronauts team, he was the man, so he was truly proud of that. But I wanted to make sure I got this on the film because, uh, yeah, it shows that Pops was a ball. He wasn't quite as good as me because I was that deal on the court. You know what I'm saying? But he was all right. He was all right. In memory of Benny Lake, man, a great man. Shout out my daddy told me that. Salute all the single fathers. Salute all the single mothers that's out here being fathers. Salute all the mentors, the uncles, the brothers, the cousins that help raise these children, man. Salute. But most of all, salute the youth, man. It's easier to raise strong boys than repair broken men. And Frederick Douglass taught me that. It's Logo.